Welcome to the dorm tech video on turning your router into an AP. First, let's be clear about what a consumer router actually is. Inside of this box are three separate components that all do different things. First is the router, which functions like a middleman between the internet and the PCs in your home network, routing traffic where it needs to go. Second is the network switch. This connects to the router, the ethernet ports on the back, and to the last component of this device, the wireless access point. The wireless access point uses radio waves to talk with connected devices. Now that the hard part is out of the way, let's get to the actual process. The materials you will need are a second router, a computer to configure it with, and network connectivity in the spot you wish to deploy this router as an access point. If running a physical cable to where you want to put this access point is not possible, you are not out of luck. Using a power line network setup can make the electrical lines in your wall act like Ethernet through devices like this. A review coming soon. Now, let's go through the setup process. Firstly, plug your second router into the power outlet, but do not connect it to the Ethernet yet. Your second router is still configured to act like your main router, and will try to issue IP addresses to devices connected to it. These, these devices will already have assigned IP addresses, and plugging your second router into the Ethernet at this stage will cause confusion. Second, second connect a PC to your second router, either over wireless or Ethernet, and navigate to its configuration utility. This is done by typing the IP address found on a sticker on the bottom of the router. If your router does not have this sticker, click the Start button on the computer connected to the router, type CMD, and hit Enter. In the black box that comes up, type IPConfig, I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. Text will show up in the box. Find the text Default Gateway. The number that follows Default Gateway is the one that you want. In our case, this number is 192.168.1.1. Type this number into the URL bar in your favorite browser and hit enter. When it asks you for login credentials, those are also on a sticker on the bottom of the router. If you cannot find the credentials on your router, Google your router's, router's model with router model and then default credentials. Once you get signed in, you need to disable the second router's DHCP service. This will stop it from trying to assign IP addresses on your network. At this point, each router may have a different interface, so if you can't find the option, Google will once again become your friend. After disabling DHCP, you need to set the second router's IP address to one that will fit the network created by the first router. Set the second router's IP to 192.168.1.125. If this doesn't work, try 192.168.0.125 or 192.168.2.125. Different router manufacturers use a different third digit. So one of these three should work for your router. On average, a consumer router will assign the last part of the IP as something between 100 and 150, so 125 is a good middle ground. If 125 is taken, which is highly unlikely, try 127, 128, 124, etc. If the second router requires a subnet or subnet mask, put 255.255.255.0. For default gateway, put the IP address of your original router, which will be on a sticker on the bottom. If you can't find the sticker, log on to the computer connected to your original router and press start, type CMD, hit enter, type ipconfig, hit enter, and look for the default gateway again. In the channel drop-down menu, use channels 1, 6, or 11, as these do not overlap with each other. If you do not know which of these channels is less congested and would be best used for your setup, pick up an app like Wi-Fi Analyzer for your smartphone. You can use that to scan all of the channels and show you the clearest one open. Finally, connect your second router to an Ethernet cord that goes to your main router. It is most important that you plug this cable into one of the ports labeled LAN, or local network, not the one labeled WAN, or Internet. So, here is the Internet port. You would not want to plug it into here. Instead, you'll want to plug it into one of the four Ethernet ports. Alright, well if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, remember to like and subscribe, and maybe we'll upload a safer version of the Ether Killer. Remember to link this to your friends and have a nice day. Dormtime.